our North Korean buildings. I am officially in North Korea. I never traveled internationally as a kid, but at 21 years old, inspired by my brother's study abroad trip, I planned a trip with my brother and two best friends to Southeast Asia and Japan for a month. It was an experience that changed my life. In the 16 years since then, I ended up getting hooked on travel and visiting 195 of the 197 nations on Earth. This March, after waiting for five years, the DMZ JSA tour that would finally get me into, although just barely, North Korea, was reopened by the United Nations, and CC and I signed up to be in the first group. So off we headed to the final two, Taiwan and North Korea. Here we are at the lovely Richmond BART station. Barbed wire fence behind us, making our way down. Gonna be a lot of travel over the next five days, getting to the final two countries in the world. Yes! Of Taiwan and North Korea, nonstop flight, SFO to Taipei. Here we go. <laughs> 196. Yes! It is 10 p.m. after 20 hours of travel from Sacramento, San Francisco. We've made it out to the streets. It kind of smells like the streets, and we're heading over to like the one of the, well, you know what I mean, it smells like the uh, sewage kind of out here. And we are making our way over towards one of the biggest night markets in Taipei. There we go. I don't even know what's in it. Just pointed, pointed at a photo. <laughs> Spicy Thai pork. <clears throat> yeah, it hits you a little bit. Hello. Fried pork buns. I love food. <laughs> <laughs> Statement of the century. <laughs> this is your second to last country. Come on, drama. So exciting. Second to last country in the world. Mm. Two donuts. Two is better than at the one. Same time. <laughs> It is just about midnight. We are in country two of the World Wind Tour here in South Korea. It's chilly. <laughs> it's gonna be about freezing tonight. Good morning. Today's the day of 197, the last country in the world. Woohoo! It's a warm 35 degrees out here on the streets of Seoul. Walking over to the city hall to exit number six to meet the tour group to head up to the DMZ and the JSA Joint Security Area. Excited, hard to sleep last night. Like a reservation, right? Also, also today I'm so excited to go to the JSA too. You will see the actual border between South and North Korea, so you can feel the separation of my country. This is one of the coldest parts of South Korea here in the beginning of the tour. The sun is just coming up. It's really interesting. This lady's got her grandma that lived in North Korea, so you can feel it when the history is personal. You can really tell. So my father and dad cried a lot. We are on tour Jenny, the first group to make it into the DMZ, and we're on the first day possible to go to the JSA, the Joint Security Area. Inside the building, only place we can cross the border to step into North Korea. One of the UN soldiers will escort us for the JSA trip. He's gonna brief everything to us. Seaweed Pringles! I mean, you have to. Mm. Any chance I see seaweed things, I feel like I need to eat them. Alright, you can use any binoculars to see doors clear right now. <laughs> really cool checking out the tunnel here that goes down several hundred feet straight down and it intercepted the North Koreans that were digging the tunnel. This is a picture when we found they already ran away.
The UNC SB JSA's base consists of two camps. The mines are so dense that if a six-foot man were to fall in the DMZ, there is a 50% chance that he would fall on a landmine. If they ever try to outdo it, they'll just add another piece. And on November 13th, 2017, Sergeant O stole a vehicle, drove across the 72-hour bridge, straight up here, and crashed into a ditch right over there. Then as he was backing out, North Koreans came out of the large building, Remungak, and uh, opened fire on him. The silver buildings in the middle are North Korean buildings, and the blue buildings are United Nations buildings. To your right, the large building is called Freedom House. It was built so that families torn apart by the Korean War could come and reunite and spend a little bit of time together. But it has never actually been used for that purpose because North Korea does not trust its uh, people to come into the South. The North Koreans like to play games. Uh, Often times before negotiations, they would come in and they would saw two couple inches off of the bottom of the legs of the chairs that, uh, that UNC officials would be seated in. During negotiations, they would blow their nose on the flag, take it out, stomp on it, lots of fun stuff. And they would also, uh, there was also a brief uh, attempt to one-up each other to see who could bring a larger flag in until the North Koreans tried to bring in a flag so large it didn't fit through the door. Okay, I'm officially in North Korea, country 197. The border is about five feet behind me here. I'm on this side of the Blue House conference room. It's been 17 years in the making. I'm really happy to be here, grateful, and uh, I can't believe it. It's a moment I will never forget. Say goodbye to North Korea. It was a fun five minutes for the last country in the world, country 197. We did it. Every country in the world. <laughs> DMZ, I can see North Korea, but I cannot feel that quite North Korea. But when I saw the JSA, and then I saw the border and the North Koreans, and I felt tension much higher than the DMZ, I realized my country is really divided, and I was quite sad. So when I came here, JSA, I could feel the separation of my country. So actually, today this is my third trip. I've been doing this DMZ more than a thousand times. JSA was as you easily cancelled. <laughs> Only the few agencies arranged for the JSA trip. It was not easy to come here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Just got off the tour. Still riding the roller coaster high here that is 197. Back in the bustling streets of Seoul, I'm looking forward to a Korean barbecue dinner. Okay, so this is fun. We're celebrating 197 here with a typical Korean barbecue. It's all locals in here. I hope you can hear me. The place is jumping at 7 o'clock dinner time and uh, digging into some good grub here. Okay, so once you get your pork belly cooked up and chopped up, you grab it, put in some sauce. Sauce number two, some of the crunchy flakes, and mm, so good.